Hi, this is Dr. Nikki, and I'm really excited to be here with you today to talk to something that about something that's very interesting to me, which is this idea of strategies and different ways of doing math. And specifically today, I'm going to talk about second grade, and the standard is 2NBT5. I'm going to actually read the standard and emphasize some of the parts that I think are important. The standard says fluently add and subtract within 100. So what does that mean? Well, remember when we're talking about fluency that we're talking about you know speed and accuracy really in this case accuracy there's not so much speed when you're trying to add you know big numbers um, but to do it without hesitation really the fluency and then flexibility which is really what we're going to focus on today can kids add and subtract in a variety of ways are they flexible in their thinking and then efficiency can they choose the strategy that is most efficient given the numbers that they have right so if you have 29 minus 14, you're going to use a different strategy than if you had 29 minus 20. Um, so we want kids to be able to be flexible, We want meaning we want them to be able, uh, fluent, meaning we want them to be able to have speed and accuracy, flexibility, as well as efficiency. So the standard says fluently add and subtract within 100 using strategies based in place value, the properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. So that's really important. Being able to add and subtract using those three ways. Again, I want to emphasize place value and properties and the relationship between addition and subtraction. So with that, in this video, you're going to see some of those strategies. And I'm going to talk about ways to teach two-digit addition to second graders. And there's many ways. Here are some. Um, one is the base 10 sketch. And that's where the children write out the numbers. And so if they write 32 and 57, then they're going to sketch out the 32. They're going to sketch out the 57. And then they're going to add them together. And um, they have the sketch to accompany it. So we have 30 and 50. It's 80. And then 2 and 9 is at two and seven is nine, and so we have 89. And that's the base 10 sketch. You should have your kids do a lot of those so that they're actually seeing the relationship between the numerals and the um, sketch. Okay. The next one I want to talk about is expanded form. So here we have the children working, and they are um, actually expanding out. So we have 30 plus 2 from 32 and 50 plus 7 from 57. And then we add 80 plus 9 and we get 89. So that's the expanded form. Another way your children should know how to do it. Another way is the open number line. And so we have 32 plus 57. I tell the kids to start with the highest number. So they'll start with 57. They'll jump 10 and get 67. Jump 10 more and get 77. Jump 10 more and get 87. And then they still have two more to jump. And so they jump 87, 88, 89. Or they could start with 57 and jump 3 to get to a friendly number, and then they'd have 29 left to jump. I want you to see I got the 29 from subtracting the 3 that I did to get to a friendly number. So I jumped 3, and I now I have 29 left, and I jump 10, and then 10, and then 9, and I get to 89. And that's the open number line. The next way is the traditional method, and this is just where you're just regrouping, you know, 9 and 2, you get 11, you're going to regroup 10 of those, and now you have 10 and 30 and 50, and you get 9, so you have 91. Um, traditional method, there's a lot of controversy. Wherever I go in different states, teachers are arguing about whether to teach the traditional method or not. And so I wrote Bill McCullum, one of the lead writers of the Math Common Core, and I asked him, and he said, look at the blog. He has a blog, um, and if you just Google Bill McCullum, it's called Common Core Tools or something like that. And um, you, he has a whole, you put in second grade um regrouping and it'll come up the whole discussion about whether or not to teach second graders regrouping um, and what basically is the outcome of the conversation is that it's just one of many methods it's not stressed it's not emphasized but it's certainly the children are exposed to it and you move on the idea is that they know that there's lots of different strategies and um, that they're exposed to this one as well as the others all right so compensation is one of those 
strategies. It's a more difficult strategy, but this kid should really um, be taught the strategy, and they should be able to make the connection when they were learning their single digits facts um, within 20, when they learned that 7, 8, or 9, you're always going to make it a 10. And so here they see 32 plus 59. They know they're going to make the 9 a 60, and then they're going to have to adjust for having done that, and they can take one away from the 32 and get 31. So they have 31 plus 60 is 91. So those are five ways to think about teaching your children how to add within 100 using two-digit um, numbers. And then in second grade, you also teach the children how to add three-digit numbers with these same strategies. Um, this is really good for, first, for second grade, but remember, in third, fourth, and fifth, we have a lot of kids that don't know these strategies. So this is good review. This is good intervention when kids are really struggling to go back and teach them some of these strategies. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned some stuff. I really enjoy this strategy stuff. I think it's really important. I think a lot of it pushes us as teachers and educators out of our own comfort zones because we learn to regroup, period. Right. And now we're teaching our kids how to do it four and five ways. Um, one of the things you want to do is have your parents watch the videos because the parents know how to regroup like we do and they don't know the other ways. Also, take pictures of your anchor charts. Hang anchor charts up of all the strategies and take pictures and send those pictures home with your children. That came from a teacher out of Connecticut who started doing that, a third grade teacher, and he had so much success with it. I think it really works and I think it's a great idea. So thank you for joining me and I look forward to working with you again. Happy mathing. As always, Dr. Nikki.